Hey, Multimedia. Uh, we're going to look today at a couple things uh, that can help us make our board games a little bit more interesting and also less work. So we're always looking for ways to make great work but with less effort. So um, good results, less effort is a good thing. So we're going to start off, and we're, since we're doing board game, we're going to set our uh, units to inches and our width to 15 by 15. So 15 by 15 inches. Make sure you set inches. Make sure you choose 15 by 15. There's no orientation on this for vertical or or landscape because uh, it's square. So you can switch it, but it'll still be the same thing. It's just not going to matter. In fact, you can't even pick that. So uh, let's go ahead and click Create. And here we go with our artboard. Okay, I'm going to reset my workspace just because sometimes things get a bit messy. And uh, I'm going to reset Essentials. And I'm just going to drag this over to the middle. And there are a couple things I need to have available to me just on the regular. And I always make sure I have the control panel open at the top. It's actually the control bar. And then I'm going to also open up uh, a line because I use it a bunch. And it also shows up as two best friends, uh, Transform and Pathfinder. So we have this rock and roll ready to go. Now the next thing I'm going to do, let's assume we're trying to make um, some trees to scatter across our, our uh, board game space. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the ellipse tool. I'm going to set my fill color to greenish, but not like bold, bright green. I'm going to desaturate it to about 60%, 50%, just so it doesn't dominate the scene. If it's really bright, it's going to be really intense, and we're going to look there instead of at the parts of the game. So this is just a supporting actor. So I'm going to drive the the uh, saturation down a little bit, and you can mess around with the uh, the hue if you want to, depending on what color your trees are. You know, you want to kind of go a semi-realistic, but you're still doing sort of iconic representation. Let's click OK, and let's go ahead and make uh, an ellipse. So here's this. Now the ellipse, as we know, maybe we do, maybe we don't, has four points. One, two, three, four. In fact, if you want to see those points better, if you open up layers and open up the layer settings for this layer, how do we do that? Open, double click on the the uh, the thumbnail next to it, and you can set uh, by changing the color to from light blue to uh, like red or something. So I always find it important to pick my layer colors well because easier to see sometimes. So I can see that red a little bit better. So I can look at these points one, two, three, four points, and let's just assume we're going to stick to four points for now. But I want a nice bulby looking tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, um, use, you have to select it with the selection tool, not the direct selection like I was a second ago. So then we're going to go Effect, Distort and Transform, and we're going to choose Roughen, for example. So let's try Roughen, and uh, what this does, if I choose Preview, is it just gives me a bunch of wiggly shapes. Now it still thinks it's an ellipse. You and I look at it and we see a tree, but it's still thinking, I only got these four points, I'm cool. So let's look at a couple of other options we can use. Let's apply different things to each each design here. So three ways of doing trees. Again, we got this one, which is going to be Effect, Distort and Transform, and Roughen, and Preview always. And what you have here for your settings is you can set your size of your uh, your roughen, roughness here. You can set your detail to more and more and more and more and more of them. That gets pretty spiky and weird. Lots of ways you might use this for cool things. It's fun to work with and it looks nifty. And it makes me think of Dr. Seuss tough for some reason. I don't know. But fewer points is going to give us, look at that, <laughs> less points. It just goes to a dime. That's pretty weird. Uh, we can build this out. So I can change this up. And then if you choose smooth instead of corner, it gives you sort of curvy shapes instead of corners. So that's a thing. Let's just go ahead and uh, bring down the size. And that looks like an oak tree or something. I don't know. Let's pick a different method here. So I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to choose, again, Effect, Distort and Transform. And it um, seems like there's a zigzag, there's a twist. I thought there was something else in here. Pucker and Bloat. There we go. So Pucker and Bloat, if we preview, it's very simple. It can Zero, nothing happens. But if you drag up the value here, it puckers. And this one does it along those points. And if you bloat, I guess that's Pucker and the other one's Bloat. I got it backwards. So what do we got there? Pittsburgh Steelers, right? but not green. So I got this bulb set. Now, the thing I like about this is it lacks the number of points I want. So what if I add points? And again, it still thinks it's an ellipse. So if I choose the Add Anchor Point tool and go on the path, if you miss, it tells you you missed, man. But if you get right on the point, on the edge, on the path, 
it sort of tells you when you're on it by paying attention to those smart guides. And it still says I missed. I thought I had it. Path, there we go. So I can randomly add these points to it. And stuff. So that's kind of okay looking. What if we add another effect to this? We say effect, distort, and transform, and we try roughen. Let's see what happens. Just as a mad experiment. So really not too much. So, uh, you know, you could do both or you could do one. It's kind of up to you. Um, however you want to design this. You can try a couple different methods um, to make this work. So let's figure we, may, we might use one or the other. And what we're going to do today is we're going to make a, a scatter brush. Now, scatter brush for, for trees. Let's just put these aside. And uh, the question I have is when I scatter these about using the scatter brush tool, which I'll show you in a second, uh, is it going to maintain the shapes or not? So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the brush panel. Go to Window and choose Brushes or F5. Is that F5? Yes. My eye says sometimes fails me. So i got to get, get, get my brush panel going. And in my brush panel, there's all these brushes. But you didn't know about this, right? All these cool brushes. Now, uh, our last class, we did one where there was a, the, um, it was a pattern brush. And today we're going to do a scatter brush. Which I'm not sure if there's any in here by default. Let's see. I'm not sure. Image brushes, vector packs. There's probably some in here. I don't know. Hard to say. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this shape. Either one of them. doesn't matter. Just pick the one you like and drag it and drop it on the brush panel. So now you get to choose which kind of brush you're going to do. Last time we did pattern brush. Today we're going to do a scatter brush. And the scatter brush lets us choose some options. So initially you're just going to pick some things kind of randomly. And I'm going to randomize, random, 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 everything. And this is going to look like I drew a bunch of trees. Once you look closely, you realize, nope, you didn't draw a bunch. You drew one, man. You're lazy. Or efficient, however you want to see it. So let's drag this down. So I'm going to have a range of sizes. And I'm going to arrange the spacing apart from really close to maybe a little bit farther. And scan. if you are like, what if I get it wrong? You can always come back and change it. And it will apply to all your other brushes, all your other places that you, you use the brush. Scattering. This has to do with the left or right side of the path. So if I go left, it's this way by, what is that, 309% negative. Well, that's based on the size. So as many as much as three times the width of it to the left. And I don't know, that's probably too much to the right. And then randomly rotating. This part's really important because if they're all directed the same way, you're going to, oh, they're all the same tree. And of course, you can Realize that they're all made with the same tree if you look really closely. Now, where's my tree? Well, there's my brush. And if I take my, let's just use a, a ellipse for now, just for fun, and make the shape and apply that brush to it. Now, you can see we've got the trees, but we also have uh, the ellipse in the first place. So I'm going to kill the fill and keep the stroke. Now, if I don't like this at all, I'm like, something's wrong with this picture. Then you open up the brush again. And you go, let's try something else. And we choose preview to be on. And we adjust the sizes. So from smaller to bigger-ish. And let's change the spacing a little bit. Like this. We can randomize the left and right of it. It kind of doesn't matter if you do scattering left or right. Because you just, you know, then you lose control of where they are. But you may want to have less control over it. Hard to say. And then the last one is randomizing the rotation. So the rotation is probably okay, but there's no reason not to just make the whole possibility. So now I've got the trees, and this says this brush is in use, and some strokes may have overridden its options. Do you want to apply the changes to the existing brush strokes? Well, let's apply it. And as you can see, nothing changed once I did the, had the preview over. So this is just another example of a scatter brush. Now let's try something else just for fun, as I like to say. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my uh, downloads, and I found a picture on the Internet of a bee. And here's a bee. Now, you could try to drop this on the brush panel, but it won't work because, well, maybe it does. Let's try it. Uh, cannot contain linked images. So what we need to do is we're going to change this into a vector image. Because right now, if you zoom in on this, because it's a PNG, we have pixels. I don't want pixels. I want lines. I want a vector. So I want the strokes and the fills. So if I choose image trace, 
like what changed? Well, something did. You know, you can see the shapes change a little bit. And you can also choose the tracing results. So I want to choose outlines on this. Oops, I lost my outlines. And I can't see my work there. So let's go back to something else, tracing results. Let's try tracing result with outlines. Uh, let's try source image. No, I don't want that one because it's got pixels. So let's try tracing result. And what I want to do next to make sure it's not this huge shape is I'm going to expand it. Now by expanding it, I now have access to more points. So I'm going to cut these points out using the minus or remove selected anchor points tool in the control bar. And I'm going to remove these. So I'm going to go, uh, where is it? I can't see it. I lost the button. Very bad. I'm just going to push delete on the keyboard. So I have this thing now. Oops. Sorry about that. I lost my... Now, just like the trees with this thing, I can take this and uh, add this onto my brush panel. And now I'm going to get my bees all scattering around, buzzing in the same direction. So scatter brush is what I'm going to choose. Not a bad idea to name it, which we have not been doing. So I'm going to call this bees. And you might even call it bees one, because you may wind up with more bee brushes. And so now uh, let's do some randomization. What do we want to randomize? Maybe some randomization on the size. Maybe not. Maybe not too much. Maybe not too much. Uh, let's even go smaller. Well, let's get the sizes pretty close to each other. So as you choose your selections on here, it's kind of important to consider what's the range of sizes you actually want. And sometimes it's not that great. So we want to keep it kind of small. And we can always come back and change this like we did before. And uh, let's go to... Um, uh, let's try the spacing as random and the scattering as random. But let's leave the rotation all the same sort of point in the same direction. Or maybe randomize it by not that much. So let's kind of go negative 9 and plus 9. So they're kind of all pointing the same direction. Out doing their busy work as bees. And um, spacing. Yeah, let's randomize the spacing a little bit. Uh, we do want some randomization on the spacing from not that much to more. Uh, and this is in percent of the size of the object itself. So in this case, we're going to have overlap because we have less. In this case, we're going to have more because it's uh, like the 300 is 300% or three times the size is the, the spacing. Then the scattering is going to be left and right. We want to kind of use that because we want to make a swarm of bees. We'll click OK. And now when I double click, nothing, right? But you have to use the brush first. So I'm going to go ahead and make um, a pen tool. And to use the pen tool, we can click, 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 click to get a closed shape, and those are straight lines. If we click and drag, however, we get curves. And that's kind of fun to work with. So in this case, we're all going to be buzzing in the same direction. And then we're going to click the tool to get out. And then we're going to click the bees, and there's our bees. Now, they're all pointing the same direction. I think it's direction of the, uh, the screen. So what I want to do is orient them to the path. Is there a way to do that? Let's see. I thought there was. Scattering, rotation, ro relative rotation, relative to path. There we go. Much happier now. Okay. And uh, we'll apply that to the strokes. I don't really like this. I want more bees. Um, so let's say the size of spacing. Let's go less spacing. And I'm using preview, of course. And there we go. And lots of bees, all oriented to the path. So, um, okay. And then we can apply the strokes, and then we have our bees. Now, later on, I'll teach you how to color these in if you are tracing them from a line image. Uh, but that's pretty much how you build up a, a swarm of bees and a bunch of trees. And I've shown you a few things, and so are these. All right, uh, I'll check you later, and uh, have a great day, and work, work on this. Your job will be to make bees and trees, and you might even throw in a background from, for some grass. And the trick with grass is to uh, make sure it's a different color than the trees or they mix in together. All right, later.